Hey you, yeah, you. Are you unmotivated, underappreciated, possibly even homosexual? If so, then you probably have a strong hatred towards little people. Don't worry, gentlemen, I have a solution. In today's video, we are going to be playing as Ikit Claw, a mad scientist attempting to develop ever increasingly efficient ways to give someone carcinoma. Our goal for today's playthrough is to rid the world of the dwarven menace, as dwarves and incels are natural born rivals. However, this goal is easier said than done. On turn 100, the dwarves will spawn several high tier armies and band together to run a train on my little rat body. Luckily for us, Ikit has a variety of tools to aid him in fending off unwanted advances, such as Gatling guns, big wheels, and nuclear bombs. Will we be able to form a nuclear superpower and win the day? Or will the short kings finally have someone they can look down on? Welcome to the realm of the Border Princes. Just south of France, this area is home to pirates, Spaniards, and angry cow people. Like all games of Warhammer, our campaign starts with us introducing ourselves to our neighbors. While you might strike up a conversation with them, I prefer to use a Gatling gun to liquidate their vital organs. Now, that may seem a little violent, but I promise it's necessary. See, whenever a battle is fought as Ikit's faction, there is a chance the flesh of the deceased will be converted into radioactive material, which can then be used in our laboratory to upgrade our weapons teams and war machine units, or build nuclear bombs. And uh, these are kind of important if we want to become a true nuclear superpower. To continue our assault on the nation of Astalia, we raised a second army of Skaven slaves and used them to set ourselves a bit of a rat trap. We finished securing Astalia and then took a moment to examine our position in the world. That's a bit of a low number. Surely, uh, my neighbors won't take advantage of that. Foreshadowing as a narrative device. To my complete and utter surprise, both Elizabeth Swan and what I can only imagine is the spokeswoman for veganism declared war on me at the same time. Now, when it comes to a three-way, I've always been a bit better at giving rather than receiving. So I took the fight to the pirates, rushing Ikit back to the capital while leaving Krelk with an army of Skaven slaves to handle the beastmen. No fucking shot I win that, but hey, I'll take it. This actually happened a couple of times. Using basically nothing but Skaven slaves, we were able to make pretty short work of the Beastmen, while Ikit focused on the real war in the East. Before Ikit engaged the enemy, he took a quick pit stop at our capital, Detroit, to upgrade his army. We launched an attack on the pirates within our borders, and as a demonstration of force, decided to drop our first nuclear bomb of the campaign, the results of which had me giggling like a little boy. And as we all know, behind every little boy is a fat man. And much like a certain 1940s naval power, it took only a second drop of the bomb to fully pacify the pirates. With the pirates dealt with and the land properly irradiated, I took a couple of turns to further upgrade Ikit's army before making my move on the nearby dwarf clan, ruled by Belagar Ironhammer. We declared war, and thus, the first shot in the Great War, short dudes versus rat guys, was fired. Inspired by the Viet Cong, I utilized a series of guerrilla warfare tactics and caught Belagar in an ambush battle. Remember, gentlemen, when fighting someone, especially someone shorter than you, it's much easier to win if you douse them with 5,000 gallons of liquid napalm. I literally just noticed this, but in the post-battle screen, we took 514 casualties, yet the dwarves only got 1 plus 2 times 14 plus 6 carry the 3. 332 kills. One of you was killing your own men, which as a Skaven makes me very proud. After this battle, Belagar's defense quickly fell apart and I was able to conquer the rest of his cities without much issue and used food to upgrade his capital to tier four, which unlocks even higher tier units for myself. Around this time, I summoned a doom engineer and constructed an undercity in the dwarf capital of Karaz Akarak to keep an eye on my future enemy and siphon off their income. After killing Belagar, I sat back for a moment to recuperate and work on developing my empire. Yet whenever I start to relax, CA knows just how to make my blood pressure spike right back up. Like any incel, I hold the belief that the only thing worse than a woman is a French woman. However, I wanted nothing to do with the Southlands, and since this French woman was overseas, 
I took my frustrations out on this French woman instead. Now, nothing in this life gives me greater pleasure than dropping atomic bombs on French peasants. However, spewing them with 150,000 gallons of chlorine gas is a close second. It didn't take long to finish off the rest of the Fey Enchantress's forces, after which we killed off Grom the Paunch, established another undercity inside the Wood Elf lands, and then did Ickit's quest battle. Everything seemed to be going quite well for me, yet for some reason I couldn't shake this feeling that I was forgetting something important. Foreshadowing as a narrative device. Oh yeah, that. After many turns, the southern Frenchies were finally sallying forth. Luckily, I had an army in position ready to deal with. Where are you going? I lost a settlement to Lioness, and while I quickly got it back, it didn't change the fact that I was enraged. If only there was someone weak and feeble to take my anger out on. Hi there, young people. A nice day today. We declared war on Old Man Kemmler and quickly swept across his lands, taking cities and destroying armies left and right. Ah. Oh. Look who's back! This back and forth game of whack-a-mole with Lioness continued for essentially the rest of the game, so I will no longer be dignifying her with screen time. Back on the western front, we'd succeeded in our goal of shoving old man Kemmler down the stairs and stole a few of his social security checks for good measure. With the war's conclusion, we now had the majority of France under our control, yet one holdout still remained. Paris. Wasting no time, I made my move and declared war on the King of France who was joined by this giant sentient oak tree. We quickly dismantled Lewin's forces, and with the help of a demon from the British Isles, destroyed his capital. With the last of the French expunged from France, I turned back to focus on the tree. Fighting the Wood Elves is always a terrifying endeavor, but thankfully, Durthu made the fatal mistake of running branch first into a wood chipper. That's one tree Mr. Beast won't be replanting. Now that things have calmed down a bit, let's see how my future enemy, Thorgrim, is doing. Oh, uh, he's gotten pretty big. The strength of the dwarves was already terrifying, and the crisis hadn't even spawned yet. Happy with the size of my borders, and confident that my land was now secure, I began making my way back to my capital, to reorganize my armies and prepare for the coming crisis. Are you fucking serious? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? It seems that poor old man Kemmler has been suffering from dementia, because he had clearly forgotten what happened the last time we fought. <laughs> I took the armies that had just arrived at Skavenblight and marched them right back up into France once again. Despite early territorial losses, once my armies arrived, we were able to stabilize the front and push the old man back outside of our initial borders. And then it happened. I received the warning message that the crisis would be spawning in 10 turns. I couldn't still be messing around with old man Kemmler when that happened, so I began to get a little bit more aggressive. I pushed forward and seized the town of Marienburg. Then, much like a newborn baby, I shook Kemmler violently until he dropped another social security check before racing back to my capital. It's around this time while heading home late at night that a strange man from the forest will attempt to engage you in an uncomfortable conversation. I'm gonna come. Unfortunately for this man, I'd preemptively put a pipe bomb in his house. With just one turn left to spare, I'd made it back to my capital, and as the endgame event fired, I realized I'd made a huge mistake. So. I've never actually done the Grudge Too Far event before. Hell, I rarely finish Warhammer games in general. And while I expected legendary lords like Belagar to respawn, I did not anticipate the minor factions respawning too. So once again, I was forced to return to France. I split my forces, sending two armies up to defeat the newly respawned dwarf minor factions, while the rest went to go deal with Belagar. We traded blows with Belagar, winning a pair of ambush battles before having our first major battle of the crisis. Thanks to a massively effective nuke, as well as the combined fire of our mortar teams and rattling gunners, we struck a decisive victory against Belagar and quickly destroyed his faction once again. However, massive battles like this would set the tone for the remainder of the playthrough, a fact that I was already tired of after one. Over in Bretonia, we slowly but surely pushed the minor dwarf factions back, picking our targets carefully and winning battle after battle, until finally, we had secured France once again, and could dedicate our full attention to the real threat, Thorgrim. As we began our offensive on Thorgrim's faction, so began the slog. Battle after battle, there just seemed to be no end. No matter how many dwarves we gunned down, gassed, or bombed, 
They just kept coming. The next time my grandfather is telling me about his time in Vietnam, I'll finally be able to relate. Yes, Grandpa, I have seen the things you've seen. I do understand what it's like. I am going through what you're going through. Do these experiences make me a hero? Yes. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, we broke through Thorgrim's forces. Just in time for Karat Kadrin to show up. Bring it on! We fought another massive battle against Karat Kadrin, won and scattered their forces as well. With the dwarf armies temporarily broken, I decided maybe now was the perfect time to strike a major blow and hopefully remove some of the dwarven capacity to create higher tier units. I launched a major offensive on the dwarf capital city of Karaza Karak, captured it, and got a victory screen. Huh. Now, I know technically the dwarves aren't anywhere close to defeated yet, but the game says I won, and it's either this or the voices win, so... Big shout out and thank you to Patreon supporter Coco Nut. Being at only 500 subscribers at the making of this video and already having a Patreon supporter actually blew me away. I don't know how to actually end this from here, so uh, okay bye.